Hey there, you're listening to the Pursue Your Spark podcast. My name is Heike Yates, and on this show, we talk about how to unlock your potential in your fitness lifestyle with tips, strategies, and interviews to help you create the life you love. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I'm your host, Heike Yates, and in today's episode number 30, we're talking about taking action. Because what good is all the motivation if you don't take action? I was talking to my husband the other day about how many people come to me for motivation, being motivated to get started and get going and getting ideas for exercise and nutrition and how to live healthier. And he asked me, uh, Heike, what good is all the motivation if you don't take action? And it just hit me like a brick. Oh my God, he was so right on. So I had to share my thoughts and ideas with you about motivation and why motivation may not lead to action despite mustering all the willpower. Nothing happens. And why taking action will actually lead to more motivation. Why is that that so many of us don't get going? I mean, we get motivated, we get fired up, and nothing happens. We never take action. So I thought of some example that might sound familiar to you. So listen to this. You planned on working out every day, but despite your best intentions, you're not really sure why you didn't work out, not even once. Or you like to get more done in your day, but continuously procrastinate, ending up in getting little to nothing done despite the to-do list. Or you're frustrated and strive for better, whatever better is, better eating, better exercise habits, a better lifestyle, just better, without a clear plan of action and exactly what that better really means to you. So I was wondering if you have asked yourself, what holds you back to take action steps despite the fact that you're really pumped up and you're really motivated? So I thought maybe it is that you just don't feel like it ever that it's too much effort, that the time is just not right, that you get distracted easily and don't have enough time for the things you thought might be important to you. Or maybe you've made it a habit of to procrastinate. Yes, it's true. There are days when you just don't freaking feel like it. So, I was creating the content for this podcast because I was so fired up with what my husband said. And I was doing some research and I was diving deep into this podcast to collect all the information I wanted to share with you for all my thoughts. And I got so involved with it that I just didn't feel like leaving my desk and you're going to laugh. But it was in fear of losing all the good ideas that came to my mind. And if I would go away and exercise, they might never come back. And this does happen. I was in a flow of ideas and writing. But trust me, that's not like this every day. So I don't want to miss out on that day that's really sparked my imagination and creativity. So I can't use it as an excuse every day. And now, no matter how I love what I do, I also love the feeling afterward and during exercise. The stress melts off and I feel so freaking energized afterwards that I don't want to miss out on my exercise. So here's what most likely happens. You wait for your motivation to take over and poof, you take action. Wouldn't that be nice if it worked that way? But unfortunately, that's not exactly how it works. We try to motivate ourselves or wait for someone else to motivate us and get us excited and inspired. Or that motivation magically makes us do things that we don't want to do. 
or we're hoping that motivation makes us more likely to achieve what we want. The interesting thing is, motivation is a theory, and based on the theory, it should make us take action. But taking action involves doing something, like changing your ha uh, habits or perhaps your lifestyle. So when we take action, something happens like you start losing weight. You see your muscles because you started lifting weights. Or you're not out of breath running one mile because you took action to do something. So instead of keep wanting and hoping, relying on motivation, and instead we get further and further away from our goal to take action. Instead of starting to go for a walk after work, it seems seemingly impossible because you keep waiting longer and longer to take action and the goal seems impossibly large. It's, that, it's not that we can't get motivated and in, inspired, by, and many of us do. But this spark of motivation may not last very long because the results are not instant and we don't see a difference right away. So what good is all the motivation if you don't take action? Motivation does not matter, but taking action matters. Without action, we don't see results or change, or even if we fail, in our eyes at least, or have to change course on our goals, it's okay, because finally we took action. Ask yourself this. Do you let your self-doubt and the feeling of feeling uncomfortable hold you back from taking action? What roadblocks stand in your way of your motivation to take action? What time do you waste doing things like Netflix or flipping through your phone? And don't do the things you were initially so motivated to do. Taking small, actionable steps. I call them baby steps. Much easier to pronounce for me. Uh, lead to big results, but baby steps bring you closer to a bigger, larger goal and bigger, larger results. So here are my four steps that lead to action and motivation. Number one, just do it. I know it sounds like a Nike commercial, but it's so true. Your goal starts out with, I will go for a one mile walk every night after work. This will result in zero action. This is wishful thinking. This is not a plan of action. This is, I will go probably most likely, um, yeah, and somehow it just never happens. Here, if you want to act, here is what you do. As soon as you come home, you go for that walk. Just the way you are, without changing into workout gear or getting water or whatever. You drop your back, maybe change your shoes because you may have work shoes on, and go for a walk around the block. That's it. You took action. And if the block is half a block, two blocks, the distance does really not matter. But you instantly took action. I just recently read a book by Mel Robbins called The Five Second Rule. And in her book, she says, the five second rule will work with any kind of behavior change that you're trying to make. The application of the five second rule is only limited by your imagination. If you want to adapt a positive new habit, just do the five, four, three, two, one rule and push yourself to do it. Here's an example using our walk. You come home, whooped from work, feet are tired, throw off your shoes, put your bag down, hang up your coat, and you're ready to grab a glass of wine or a beer. Count to five and go for your walk. Do not delay. Do not grab the wine or the beer first. Go five, four, three, two, one, and get out the door. It is a fantastic rule that has helped me get over some of my own hurdles. Number two is being consistent. So once you did the walk one time around the block, the next day is really important that you follow it up again. 
with a walk. You may walk again, maybe the same distance or longer. It doesn't matter. I want you to keep repeating your pattern using the walk for this instance and do it every day. Rain or shine, there's no excuse that it's raining, that it's windy, that it's hot. Uh, you can always walk one block. I promise doing this creates a incredible powerful habit that you know you can do more each time and that you can do it. Number three, surround yourselves with action takers. Start walking with a group of neighbors, friends, or even family. Be included into their actions, and they will be your biggest ally in your taking action instead of just being motivated by their actions. You know that I am a triathlete, but I was not born a triathlete. People tell me this all the time, how amazed and inspired they are that I became a triathlete and they could never do this. They didn't have the time, the money, the dedication to become a triathlete. You know what I say? Never say never. I've been eating my own words now uh, several times over for different things, but I thought I would never swim. I was deathly afraid of water. Putting my head in the water was a, no, no, was out of the question. I was so afraid of water. I had to overcome my fear of uh, the water because I qualified for the national tri uh, championships for triathlon. And in order to compete there, I had to swim. Initially, I qualified for a, with a bike and a run. So safe spot for me there. But to compete there, I had to learn how to swim. And I really, really wanted to be there. So I took action. I said, I can do this. I hired myself a swim coach. So each week we would go in the pool. We blow bubbles. It's really like what the, the little kids learn. But I never learned that because I, when I grew up, we were diving in Germany underwater and we would breaststroke, like what I call the grandmommy um Grandma, you swim where the head's out of the water so it doesn't get wet and you breaststroke along. That's all I could do. But that's not getting you anywhere in a competition. So I hired my coach and once a week we met. He taught me the basics and I repeated them at the pool. And I did feel really inadequate when I went to the pool and a little bit afraid too because everybody was just plowing along and doing their thing and I barely could keep myself above water. But I didn't give up, give up. I did my lesson and I got better and better. So I took action and I was consistent. Then I surrounded myself with like-minded people. Uh, I joined, or both, actually my husband and I joined a triathlon club with people that were, some were just like me starting out with a triathlon, never done this before. And everybody was so supportive and they let you know when you didn't show up for a bike ride or a run or a swim. So it was super helpful to have these people, uh, there being my support group. And through all of this, I became an Ironman triathlete. It still blows my mind seriously, but never say never. Number four, take baby steps. You may feel totally motivated to become a triathlete now or run a marathon, but you never do it because it really is a daunting task. It's a lot of time and work and it's hard and uncomfortable and the goal itself is just too big as a big chunk. So you want to set manageable goals. Pick a goal that you know you can do 100% without a doubt. You know you can walk a block, a city block, or just a, a block. Most people refer to it as city blocks. So that's what you build on. Out of one block, you do two, then do three. As your stamina increases, you will, will feel stronger, more confident, and you will have the courage to take on bigger goals and longer goals. Maybe the first goal would be a 5K, which is a three-miler. And... Maybe down the road will be the marathon. It doesn't matter what the goal is. It matters that you take action and you start taking baby steps, building on those actions. 
So there you have it, my four steps that can lead to action and why taking action leads to motivation. Number one was just do it and start. Use the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 rule. Number two, be consistent every day. Number three, surround yourself with action takers. Not people that talk about it, that really truly take action. And number four, take baby steps. One little step at a time. Manageable and doable. Imagine what your life would be like if one year, if you took action, things would actually start to happen. Things would change. And I want to hear from you which steps you took and which step led to the biggest results. So, and if you want to take action right now, Get your hands on my seven-day Pursue Your Spark Planner. It's a seven-day accountability program where you take small but specific action steps each day so you feel energized and confident. You can download your planner once you pay. You get eight worksheets, daily short videos guiding you through each step, daily motivational emails, and exclusive access to a private Facebook group. And I personally help you take action and succeed. I will put a link in the show notes. So again, imagine what your life would look like one year from now if you took action. Thanks so much for being here today. It really means a lot to me. You took action coming here today listening to me. And I can't wait to see you next time at the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Ciao.